So what's going on right now with CBP harassing Canadian clients? We had a bunch of Canadian clients that were coming back to the US and they were stopped and detained by CBP, questioned, eventually let in. But what's causing all this? It's not the first time that it's happening. Watch this video and I'll tell you what's going on and what you're gonna do about it. Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Saposhnik and I'm an immigration attorney based in San Diego, California. We're here at San Diego on the border uh, with Mexico. We have a lot of uh, clients that are crossing every day. And right now we see a lot of issues with entry and exit of the US. Uh, people being detained, questioned, uh, some of them even sent back. The same is happening on the Canadian border. But before that, I would ask you to subscribe to our channel, click that bell to be notified of new videos, and follow us on Instagram. I'm so grateful for the people that watch our videos, share them, comment, and give us so many suggestions of cool videos like this one for us to make. This video was an inspiration of several of my Canadian clients who were calling me um, terrified with what's happening at the port of entry. So let me give you an example. One of my clients, he is um, a well-known athlete in Canada. Uh, well, well-known in his field. And he's been going back and forth to the US to visit his girlfriend. He is in Vancouver, his girlfriend is in Seattle, it's very close. Um, a couple of weeks ago, he was detained by CBP uh, at the Port of Entry as he was coming in. They questioned him um, as to why he's coming back so often, they opened his bags, they looked at his phone, they looked at his laptop, uh, checked his social media, detained him for four hours, and eventually let him in the US for only two weeks. And when he asked them what is the problem, they did not give him a clear answer. Now, this has been happening every time since he's coming in. He's been stopped sometimes for an hour, sometimes for three hours, he's been missing flights, he's been angry and anxious and afraid to come into the US. So, what do you do in these cases? So, and, and again, unless you've done something wrong before, unless you committed a crime in your country, unless you uh, overstayed in the US, those are reasons for CBP to flag and detain people. But people that never done anything, the only thing that, that is really actually happening here is the frequency of the entries and exits. When somebody on a tourist visa, uh, a Canadian tourist or any other tourist, is coming to the US often, <clears throat> it becomes a presumption that they may be living in the US. And that presumption can only be lifted by the applicant, by the person who is coming in. So CBP will see on the computer that this particular client is coming to the US maybe three times a month, every month. And now the presumption is, is he living in the US or not? So they're looking in his bag and they find maybe an email saying, hey, thanks for the great job you've done last weekend in Seattle. If that's the case, that can create an alarm, an alert, stating that that person may be committing some sort of a, um, a fraud or doing something illegal by working in the US. But if you're not doing anything, if your bags are clear, if, you, if there's nothing in your, in your records and they just stop you, <clears throat> there is a way to file a complaint with CBP. You know, it can be done in writing or there are certain email addresses that we can email them to, uh, to, to ask, hey, this person is becoming in, um, he's being stopped, there's no reason, there's no flag. Or we can do a FOIA request. We can do a FOIA as a Freedom of Information Act. It's a filing that any person can do to get some records. We can do this FOIA on the CBP. I can do the FOIA on the US Embassy. We can do the FOIA on USCIS. Sometimes when we do FOIA, we may or may not file any records. I've done a FOIA on a client in the past and I found that there was a mismatch in the name between this client and somebody else there was a mistake in the file. So we had to send a request to CBP to clear that. But that was an unusual, unusual situation. In most cases, we don't really find anything in the FOIA. It's just a thing that they will flag somebody who comes here very often. And I, and I often tell people, if you are planning to come very often, make sure you have a return flight for a very short duration. Make sure that you don't carry anything with you that will alert CBP to make them think that you're working. If, you know, if you're, especially if you're not working, uh, you know, why make a presumption that you are that you're doing something illegal? Always have some backup as to why you're coming. You have a clear reason. I'm coming here to um, visit a friend. I'm coming here for a conference. I'm coming here to do something I'm leaving. Um, especially if you're an executive, especially if you have something that you need to do in the US. And honestly, if you need to be here often, find a better visa. In this case, this person probably is going to get a TN visa. Another person getting an E2 visa because they're spending more time here. Maybe, you're gonna marry, maybe he's going to marry his girlfriend. He's going to get a green card. Whatever it is, there's going to be a point if you come off into the US, they will stop you, they will detain you, and they will make your life more difficult to come in. So 
some tips. Um, if you're a frequent traveler to the U.S., make sure that you're prepared. Have documents explaining why you're coming so often. Have a return flight back. Um, have an explanation as to why you need to come often. And be proactive about it. When you, when you walk in, uh, you, can, you, can, you can tell the CBP officer, yes, it's, I'm coming back again. Because they're going to see it on the computer. Um, be friendly, never argue with them. And always be um, um, thinking ahead. Because if they detain you, if they put you in secondary, remember that you have, not, you have done nothing wrong. And most of the time, they just want to make sure that you are a person with integrity, that you're not doing anything illegal, that you're not breaking the law, and they're going to let you go. I know it's uncomfortable, I know it's annoying, but there's a way, there's a way to clear it if needed, if it becomes a nuisance. So hopefully this video is helpful. Um, again, a lot of Canadians have a lot of issues right now. We're trying to address that. And um, if I missed any details, if you have experience with CBP at the port of entry coming in, post it in the comments below, share this video with a friend, and let me know what other videos you would like me to make for you. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in our next video.